Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Alfred, and this is a game called Kingdom of Loathing, as you can probably read here. Um, it's a really, really old browser MMO that I used to play way back in the day, and it's quarantine. Um, my friends are getting back into WoW, getting back into RuneScape. I'm like, go to hell. I'm going to play Kingdom of Loathing. I'm going to club some seals. Um, so if you have any interest in this game, go play it right now. Don't let me take this joy away from you. It's an old game. It's clunky. It's very dated, but I s imagine I'll still like it. Um, I'm going to play it and that'll be that. I guess I'll get some background music for this. That should probably start now if I have it. If not, and if you're hearing nothing, then I guess that's that. Um, so we're going to hit the play. Our class. Um, I'll read these all, actually. Seal Clubber. Seal Clubbers hail from the frigid Northlands because one character class always hails from the frigid Northlands. They rely on their muscle to survive. Seal Clubbers hit things with sticks until those things stop moving. So this is a melee class. And they use the muscle stat. There are three stats in this game. Muscle, mysticality, and moxie. Um, which is, you know, a very obvious take on the classic three play styles of fighter, mage, and thief. Or of stealth, diplomacy, and combat. Um, and these are obviously all versions of fighter, mage, and thief. Although they are either offensive, like in the case of the first three of each, or defensive. Um, Turtle Tamer. The Turtle Tamer's mystical connection with her Terrapin sisters imbues her with great power. She excels at moving very slowly and winning foot races with smug satisfaction. Her muscle is the key to her success and to her long lifespan. Turtle Tamers fight with the aid of their animal companions and the magical blessing of ancient turtle spirits. They also cast protective shells around their fellow adventurers. So while this is a very obvious fighter or barbarian, um, the Turtle Tamer is much more of like a shaman or a druid. Um, they're animistic with turtles, obviously. And they act more as like a buff class. So in some cases, they're also like a paladin. Um, Postamancer. With her mastery of the arcane secrets of Noodlecraft, the Pasta Master is a force to be reckoned with. She relies on her mysticality to get ahead in the world. Pasta Masters cast powerful spells while hiding behind their enthralled undead pasta minions. So this is actually something that's uh, endemic to Kingdom of Loathing. Cooking and magic are the same thing. In every instance, cooking and magic are identical. Always, always, always cooking and magic go hand in hand. And so cooks are magicians and vice versa. Sorcerer. Long engaged in an uneasy truce with the Postamancers, the Guild of Sorcerers protect the secrets of the ancient Brotherhood of Gravy Makers. Their mysticality is their most important attribute. Sorcerers cast devastating spells and conjure protective sauces around themselves and other adventurers. So this is, again, an offensive class. Although they are more based around either being a nuker or a summoner. So big blasts of magic or summoning a bunch of buddies. And a sorcerer is protective stuff, buffs, that sort of thing. But they still have offense because everyone has to. They gotta play the game, don't they? Disco Bandit. The Disco Bandit boogies to and fro, hither and yon. Whence comes she? No man knows. Whither strikes she next? All men live in fear of her and her moxie. Disco Bandits dance out of reach of their foes while also sneakily stabbing them. So this is your rogue, this is your bard, this is your uh, almost a monk because they're very dodge heavy. Um, and in some cases, they can work like a Ken size for that reason. Um, accordion Thief. The scourge of mariachis and polka bands. Accordion thieves have plied their malign craft since time out of mind. Their moxie serves them well both in their adventures and in their interactions with the gentlemen. Accordion thieves steal accordions, which they then use to fight their opponents and play helpful songs for other adventurers. So, much more like a bard because they also buff things. Um, we're going to go Seal Clubber, and I am going to be a boy. Um, this egg remains uncracked for now. Um, I guess I should name myself then, right? That name's taken. That 
name is taken. Should have thought. Um, Dusk, Alfred. Now I'll be Dusky. Yeah. But you can call me Alfred. Dusky Alfred. And we'll hit the play button. All right. Dusky Alfred on the level one seal cover. We've got three muscle, one mysticality and one moxie. I've got nine out of nine hit points. I've got zero meat. I've got 200 adventures. And I've got one MP. MP stands for whatever your class uses. So I'm a steel clubber and I use muscle, so I have one muscle point. But a anyone else would have a, you know, a mysticality point or a moxie, but it's MP for everyone, which I kind of like. So this is the Kingdom of Loathing. Um, it wants me to click here and go to the big mountains. Um, we've just begun, and you can see the date where I'm recording this. That's embarrassing. And the time, too. It's not even, like, even at three. It's whenever the hell. Welcome to the Kingdom of Loathing. To begin with, you should finish the tutorial on Mount Noob in the big mountains. Haha, <laughs> tutorial. Okay, Undertale. Having your tutorial character name Pilly after tutorials, this game did it first. Anyway, we're gonna click where it says click here. Big Mountains. Mountain Noob. Tutorial. There they are. The bird speaks to you as you approach. Welcome adventurer, I'm the tutorial and I'd like to show you the ropes. Here they are. He points to a big pile of ropes piled on a nearby rock. Now that that's out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. I've got lots of things to teach you. Where should we begin? Teach me about my inventory. It's dangerous to go alone in the big scary world out there and nothing keeps an adventurer company as well as some sweet gear. Let's see what I've got lying around that might fit ya. The Oriole digs around in a pile of junk behind his rock and produces a couple of items. You acquire an item, seal club and club. You acquire an item. Old sweatpants. Hey, that's what I'm wearing right now. I don't have a steel clubbing club, though. Whenever you see an item, you can click on the picture to get a description of it. Why not try that now? Go to your inventory, click the backpack icon at the top of the screen, and equip the two items again. Yeah. The seal clubbing club. Oh, can you see that? OBS might not record that. Damn. They don't. This is a club used to club seals. You could probably club other things with it too. Just make sure to regularly seal your seal clubbing club with seal clubbing club seal. <laughs> it's a meat pasting component, it's a meat smithing component, and it's a one-handed club. It does one to two damage and it sells for one meat. And unfortunately, um, it's it pops up in a different window so you can't read it yourself. However, I will, oh, never mind. there it is. Yeah, look at that. I'll equip it. And then, oh. Okay, cool. Old sweatpants. This is a pair of faded gray sweatpants with an elastic drawstring. Most people don't actually break a sweat while wearing them, but sitting on a couch eating potato chips pants doesn't have much of a ring to it. They're pants type, and they're power 10. They can't be traded or discarded. Um, because these are essential items. So yeah. Um, there we go. And I've got nothing else in here. Because why would I? Oops. Big mountains. Mount Noob. Tutorial. Good job equipping that stuff. While you're out, I found this, and I thought, I thought you might like to have it. Click on it to see its description and notice the fancy blue text. It means the item is enchanted, and equipping it will improve your stats or abilities in some way. A seal skull helmet. A seal used to keep used to use this to keep its brain safe until someone knocked the brains out and made it into a helmet to keep your brain safe. Does that strike you as a little ironic? It adds one to my weapon damage, so now it'll do two to three. It's a hat and it's power type ten. Teach me about adventuring. On the left side, underneath the little hourglass icon, you can see the number of adventures you have left. Adventures are used for adventuring. Every night you get an additional forty of them. There's a cave at the base of this mountain. Let me mark it on your map. Mount Cave. Nope. Noob Cave on Mount Noob in the Big Mountains. 
Noob Cave is just, you know, an apocryphal RPG thing of like, hey, level one adventurer, go here so nothing in there will kill you. And then you can learn how the game works. You'll notice the one next to the name of the cave. That means going in there will cost you one adventure. That cave is where I keep my crates full of old junk. Head down there and smash something for me if you please. We'll do that, but first we'll put on that helm. Yeah. Um, you can read it there now. While you read it, let me explain something. Um, seals are demons. Seals behave like devils do. They are literally eldritch beasts from outside human recognition and comprehension. They are all monsters. They're all always chaotic evil. Seals are demons in this world, essentially. Uh, and in the spinoff game, West of Loathing, a similar thing happens where cows and demons are essentially synonymous. And that's just... This is the Kingdom of Loathing, and that is set West of Loathing. Noob Cave, one. So it'll cost me one adventure. I have 200, though, so I'm not too chuffed about that. You're fighting a crate. You're a little nervous about encountering a crate this early in the game. You get the jump on it. Attack with your seal clubbing club. You give it a knuckle sandwich, and since it still looks hungry, you fall up with a club damage for five, a club sandwich for five damage. Smack, whammo, boink. New attack damage record. You win the fight. This crate was empty, fueled by disappointment and boredom. You pick up some of the splinters of wood and whittle them into popsicle sticks. You gain a strongness and one enchantedness, and we're going to adventure again. It says the same thing, so we're just going to attack it. You induct it into the club club, clubbing it for six damage. Wow. Kerblam, smack, bonk. New damage record. You win the fight. The crate was full of fruit. You pocket some of it, trying to think, trying not to think about how long it's been staying down there. We get a lemon and an orange. We get two muscle boundedness. So you can see here that we didn't take any damage. We've burned some of our adventures and etc. etc. Adventure again. You pretend that it's a seal and you club the crap out of it for five damage. Splat zap boof. You win the fight. The crate was full of vodka, and the reason you know that is because now your shoes are full of vodka as well. You manage to salvage one intact bottle from the moist and fragrant wreckage. You gain an item, a bottle of vodka. Gain one beefishness and one roguishness. Good Mount Noob, and we're going to go to the tutorial. Well done, adventurer. I'm sure you noticed that when you smashed those crates, you acquired some items and gained some stat points. Adventuring is the best way to get new stuff and make numbers get bigger. And you probably wouldn't be playing this type of game if you didn't like watching numbers get bigger. What would you like to learn about next, adventurer? Teach me about my skills, Mr. Tutorial. Skills are important, and there's two kinds of them. Some can be used during fights, and others can be used not during fights. Let's investigate the second kind first. Click the book icon and use your Seal Clubbing Frenzy skill. Seal Clubbing Frenzy. Non-combat, one muscle point. By finding and clubbing a stuffed seal, you can work yourself into a frenzy. Your muscle will increase for a period of time. It gives effect to seal clubbing frenzy for five adventures. You find and club a stuffed seal. Your blood pressure rises, and your muscles surge with puissiousness. Puiss... Puissiousness. 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 You acquire the effect Seal Clubbing Frenzy. We also have the skill Clobber, but we'll use that later. Tutorial. Well done. As I'm sure you noticed, that spell gave you an effect that makes you more powerful. You can see how long that'll last in the character pane over to the left, which you guys can see right there. Now it's time for you to learn about combat skills. I've marked the Dire Warren on your map. It's a dangerous place, so you'll need every ounce of guile, which is worth, which is worth a pound of Chun-Li you can muster if you're going to survive. That's a reference to Street Fighter, for those who don't know. Guile and Chun-Li are both characters. Chun-Li is infinitely better. Head down there and use Clobber on three enemies. So you can see that we've burned our muscle point as well, but our muscle has gone up because we're in a frenzy. Dire Warren. You're fighting a fluffy bunny. This is one of the cute fluffy bunnies that populate the Dire Warren. You're not sure why it's called the Dire Warren, as you can't imagine any particularly dire circumstances or straits coming out of those little things. Nonetheless, it's probably safer to destroy it. 
Now it's free, so we'll just use this. Clobber. You cl act as the clobber, dealing two damage to the clobby. You win the fight and gain eight meat, and you gain two fortitude. So meat is money. Meat's the money in this world. Because in Final Fantasy and other RPGs, monsters drop money. But it doesn't make any sense for monsters to have gold. Sometimes it's, if it's a dragon, like of course the dragon's going to have gold. Dragons be hoarding stuff. It's their nature. And goblins, goblins like the shiny clings. They like the little, they like the jingles. Just like my one favorite NPC, Jingles the Goblin. Um, but it doesn't actually make sense for something like a spider to have gold coins. But what everything does have is meat. So meat is cash. Meat's money. You trade and buy and sell with meat in this world. There's a few other places that um, use things like tokens or tickets or whatever for money, but they're very specific. Meat is cash here. We're going to attack with a club. You attack for 10 damage. We got a crit. Pow, smack, smack, smack. You damage record. You in the fight. Eight meat and a bunny lever. You gain one muscle bound in this, and you gain a muscle point. We got roguishness. So you can see that our bar is now empty again, but now we have four muscle for a total of six because we still have seal clubbing frenzy. So yeah, those stats are adding to our other stats. So if we adventure again, um, the bunny got the jump on me. It distracts me and I stub my toe in a rock. Ow, I've lost one hit point out of 14. You induct it in the club club, clubbing it for nine damage. Biff, bonk, sucko. We got a bunny liver. We got fortitude and wizardliness. Um, I'll use clobber on this one. It gets the jump on you. It hops towards you menacingly, but you stare it down and stop it in its tracks. You act as the clobber, dealing two damage to the claw B. Gain eight meat and two beefiness. Gets the jump on you. Fluffy little bunny stares at you with cute bunny eyes. It's so cute it hurts. You lose a hit point. Clobber it. You cobble together a strategy. It involves clobbering your opponent for three damage. You win the fight. Now I'm meeting a bunny lever. We can gain two fortitude. And we're actually going to head into our inventory here. We've got some miscellaneous now. Bunny lever. Oops. This is a liver from a fluffy bunny. It's totally pristine and healthy looking. This bunny must have not been one of the much of a drinker. Popsicle stick. This is a run-of-the-mill popsicle stick. It's not one of the cool ones with a joke written on it, but it's also not one of the gross ones with a sticky popsicle residue and someone else's spit on it. So I guess you should count your blessings. We've got a bottle of vodka. This is a tiny airline-sized bottle of vodka. The orcish frat boys must have gotten this from some other dimension. It's a cocktail ingredient. It's crappy booze. Its potency is three, but it sells for 35 meat. So potions in this world are alcohol. They're all just alcohol. It's um, very, very dwarvish. And orcs are essentially frat dudes. They're all chads. Lemons. This is a lemon. It's shaped exactly like a lemon. It's crappy food. Size is one, but it's 35 meat. This is an orange. It is an orange. It's crappy food. Same deal. Um, so combining these items will give you better stat bonuses and overall will make you much stronger um, I moused over these for a second uh, that was mostly by mistake but this world actually has two moons and what the moons are doing will influence your stats so Ronald is half waxing and Grimace is waning gibbous I don't remember what those do because it's been quite a while I know they affect stats. I just can't remember how. Um, this is a reference to the Elder Scrolls because the Elder Scrolls has Masa and Secunda, I believe they're called. Uh, two large moons orbiting it. And Ultima. Ultima also has uh, two big moons. But these are obviously named after Ronald McDonald and Grimace of McDonald's fame. What happened to Ronald McDonald? He's gone. Nicely done, adventure. You probably noticed that in addition to gaining stat points by fighting those fearsome bunnies, you are also gaining meat. 
meets the currency of loathing. You want as much of it as you can get because you use it to buy skills and equipment and things. In fact, take a little mind to get you started. You acquire an item, nest egg. What would you like to learn about next, adventurer? Your campsite. Just west of the just west of the big mountains is a campsite for adventurers. You get assigned a spot as soon as you arrive in the kingdom. That's where you'll be staring. It's pretty Spartan at the moment. Here, take this tent. You acquire an item, newbie sport tent. Go to the inventory and use the tent to install it at your campsite. I'll meet you when you're done. Oh, it wants me to do it for real, real. Okay. Uh, this is an egg the tutorial gave you. You said something about it being full of meat. Crack the egg open. It turns out it's full of meat. Again, 150. Hell yeah. This is a basic tent. It's durable and waterproof, and if you put it up a can site, you'll recover additional HP and MP when you rest. If you ever find yourself running low on HP or MP, you can recover by resting in your campsite. Head over there now. You can click the map icon to give it started and give it a shot. Cool. Campground. So, Colossal Closet, this is where you put stuff you don't want right now. Uh, your quest log. It is a literal log, which I like. We've got one tattoo, and our strongest physical effect is dealt 10 damage. We'll look at the tattoos in a bit, I think. Um, on the other hand, this might be a good place to stop because I've been recording for a little bit. But I'm having a lot of fun with this. I like Kingdom of Loathing. I haven't done it in a while. Um, it's nice to dive back in, and I'm having a lot of fun doing this. So... We'll pick this up back here, everyone. Uh, have a nice day. Remember to brush your hair.